ورحمة الله وبركاته وأن كفر حسنا هاي رنتي إن كستو سماري وبدن تهاي ملاه وحندوني إن أن لبس تحدري في إنجليزي كتورة كتورته سفا أن هو بندق نضت ك إنتي سبدن هر كان سوكر ماركو غوريس أنو وحن كسوكر حافظ نسلي مارك سبدل كذا إيو تاريخها يسوم رئيسي مدن قب توكها إنتي وقتي أنا مدن كم قناع دب مارك أنا قصور الله يمل هذا هذا سبدة شيء مارك هو حاجرتا بوق ما لي دو تلاقى قرية حافظة نونا نو قب كله هون عن كجوار مارين تحصل إيره هذا موبايل أربانيتي so let me just uh, say some few words in English uh, about Isli. Isli used to be a residential neighborhood. And over the years, it has transformed itself into a major uh, economic business hub. And uh, at one point, when I became the MP, one of the things that bothered me most about this neighborhood was the terrible underdevelopment of this neighborhood. The infrastructure was down, the roads were terrible, um, and many other things were not right uh, in this neighborhood, despite the fact that it was an economic hub. So one of the, my main focuses as I became an MP was to improve the infrastructure. One of the first things we did was to work on the roads. You now have roads that were not there, if you remember five or six years ago. First Avenue was a ditch when it rained, uh, you crossed uh, the road with Mukokoteni, and when it was dry, it was a dusty ball. Um, Muratina was a rough road. First Avenue was in a bad shape. Third Avenue was a dusty uh, road. Genoarungi was in a very bad shape. Now, you can be assured for us to make any progress, all that infrastructure has been fixed, and many, many other roads are under construction. The same with such a group. Another element that you would uh, know very easily if you were uh, familiar with Isli was it was a dark neighborhood. Now it has street lights. Some places have uh, masthead. And by the way, there is now um, the first traffic lights. Has, have you noticed the traffic lights? <laughs> and so my main focus has been, and then security. We've had a very negative um, uh, history here that Isli was associated with crime, it was associated with uh, violent extremism, but I can tell you now that it is one of the safest neighborhoods in our city. Um, and um, when I was a student in the United uh, Kingdom, uh, my, one of my professors was of a Jewish origin. And uh, I was very curious. I said, every city, every pair where you go into the, in, in, in the world, you see Jewish having prominent positions in business, in uh, academia. And he said, yes, we were uh, refugees in Europe. And we decided that we needed to invest in our own people. And first, you invest in the economy. You have to make money to be someone. Second, you invest in education. If you do the economy and the education right, then you would be able to have a political voice in any situation that uh, you, 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 you live in. And this is exactly what is happening with the Somali community. They have become refugees, displaced from their own country. They have become uh, nomads, uh, global nomads. And everywhere you go, the Somali community is involved in business. Uh, there's also a great number of educated people among us. Uh, in this uh, chapter, I interviewed a number of prominent Somalis about the level of education. At one point in here in Isli, we could count with our 10 fingers the number of Somalis at universities in Kenya. Today, inshallah, there are more than 33,000 Somalis in higher education. There are two universities that are predominantly run by uh, Somalis. Uh, and uh, Muslims in this country, uh, Uma and Raf. And uh, we are in our own region of northern Kenya. 
which when I was growing up didn't even have a secondary school, has a national university. So we have come a long way. And then the other element that I would conclude my discussion uh, in English is the fact that in fact we now have a very large number of lawyers, legal experts, um, and one of the, some of the most leading legal firms in the country uh, run by people of our origin, our own uh, people. So I must say that we have made tremendous progress and we must be grateful uh, to Allah that uh, we continue on this journey. Uh, and I want to say, uh, I want to welcome these youngsters, uh, their pioneers, Ali Ibrahim, Hassan Abdelaziz, Maulid uh, Galgalo, I can tell you that you, you are not coming to an appendix of another city. Nairobi, uh, Isli is no longer an appendix of Nairobi city. It's a city within a city. And, uh, and people are coming, banks are coming here, uh, big uh, uh, companies are coming here bigger investment people, even the standard of uh, the new constructions you see, the new buildings you see, is of a higher standard than the, the earlier generations of buildings. The uh, Yare Park is coming up, um, the Souk Mall, the biggest, would probably be one of the biggest in Nairobi, is coming up. Uh, and this is going to be a metropolis of its own. And I can tell you, I would say congratulations, but within five years, uh, you will be looking back to say, what a brilliant decision did you make to come here uh, uh, to participate uh, in its activity. In the medical level, I was, I was looking also that we have many hospitals and clinics here. Uh, Isli is also becoming a medical hub. In between the bigger ones like Aga Khan and Nairobi Hospital, uh, there is a large section of the population that does not have the capacity or the financial ability to go there. They, have, they come here because they're state-of-the-art equipment. We're getting better doctors and hotels. We have more hotels here that are of a very good standard. The other day, um, I noted that Nairobi uh, Isli is going to be on the tourist uh, map of uh, Nairobi and Kenya because we have a large number, before the COVID, we used to have very large number of visitors, tourists, Somali tourists from all over the world coming to Isli, to stay here in Isli. And that trend is going to continue uh, and grow. Hadawa Haddan of Somali, 